In this week's episode, I'll be talking to the legendary Camilla all about her cheat codes and analyzing data. We'll be talking about why website analytics is important for every recruiter, what are the key metrics, and why you should be using Google for jobs. Make sure to stick around. Hello, and welcome to Recruitment Cheat Codes, the podcast where you'll find tips, tricks, and new ways to do jobs around the world of recruitment. I'm your host, Chris, a marketing executive at Wave, who earlier this year entered the world of recruitment technology. With so much to learn and not enough hours in the day, I've conscripted some of Wave's best and brightest to help me dig deeper into the industry and find out their cheat codes, which can help everyone work smarter and get more out of their day. This week, I'm joined by Camilla, who is Wave's data analyst. Camilla, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Chris. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Thank you for joining Recruitment Cheat Codes podcast. You are our second guest. Do you feel Do you feel honoured? Yeah, of course. And, and thank you for <laughs> inviting me here. <laughs> no, of course. It's been it's great to have you on, and um, yeah, really excited for our chat today. So, you are obviously Waves data analyst. Would you tell us a little bit more about your job role and what you get up to? Yeah, sure. So I'm a data analyst, as you mentioned, but I also look at the website traffic. So I look at SEO as well. So basically checking if websites are optimized for Google, whether they are displayed, um, users can find them by typing specific keywords. Amazing. Wow. It's all, all very technical. And I have to say over the past six months of me being here at Wave, you've taught me so much. So uh, I'm really excited for our chat and to, to, to tell the listeners or share the listeners a little bit more about data. So we've got um, three things that we want to have a little chat about today. What is the first one you want to talk about? Yeah, first one I want to talk about uh, why do you need um, to look at website analytics? Because I think a lot of businesses, they whether they've got the website, they don't really look at analytics and check what's going on on their website. So basically website is your tool for generating income, right? So the purpose of the website is to attract visitors. So if your website doesn't, or if there is, um, when users land on your website and they don't interact with your website, then, um, you might be losing important leads. And also you might be losing money you invested in building the website. So analyzing and knowing your user's behavior can help you make a better marketing decisions. And you can also spot any issues that are not working and fix them. Um, and it also allows you to identify areas for improvement to make a website works better. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have to say the one thing I love that um, has been said many times is that your, uh, I think probably by Emily actually, who said it quite a few times, but it's your 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 website is your twenty four seven sales or your recruitment consultant, and uh, it just doesn't stop. So I guess it's a really important thing to. <laughs> to <laughs> so in terms of for recruiters specifically, like why why is this relevant to them? And like, well, I mean, I kind of already mentioned it, but yeah, why why is website so important? Yeah, so if you're a recruiter, you probably want to see if your website attracts clients and candidates, right? So you're going to have two different audiences. So you can check, uh, if you've got the two different pages for, uh, candidates and for clients, you can check their behavior. So if there are candidates and if they land on the jobs page, uh, do they click on the apply button? Do they search for other jobs? You can also check what kind of keywords they search, uh, when they land on your website, when they do other job searches. And if they are clients, do they spend time to read the content of your website? Do they actually read your case studies or testimonials, or do they click on the, um, phone number to contact you or do they submit the contact form? So those are information that you can get through analyzing your website and look at analytics. Completely. And I mean, that, that list is, it just feels like a never ending list of things that you can, you can really sort of look at and pinpoint and start to, to figure out, you know, the overall sort of flow of the website. Now I know what a lot of people will be thinking is that's all great. That sounds fantastic, but you know, how do I, how do I actually analyze and what do I look at and what does it mean? Yeah. So, so the main uh, common, um, uh, 
metrics to look at is, of course, the number of visits of, on your website, right? So you can see at the trend, whether it's a weekly, monthly, or um, annual trend to spot any, any spikes or declines in your traffic. This will help you to make a better marketing decision. So you can see whether you uh, attract more users on a specific day of the, of the week, maybe a specific month. And then you can shift your budget depending on your um, activities on your on your website. So um, if it's a lot of traffic at the beginning of the year, you might want to spend more money in promoting your brand at this time. Um, so the other metrics might be um, looking at visits by channel. So where the users come from, do they come from social media, organic traffic, or referrals, referrals are clicks from other websites to, to your website. And also you can look at different locations, like do you drive traffic from your country where you market or, or a different one? So for example, if you drive a lot of traffic from United States, but you, your market is in, in the UK, then is the sign to look at a bit more in your website and see whether you actually send the right signals to search engines to, to target other country. Uh, so yeah, information like that can help with the analytic. And also if you add conversions to it, you can get even better overview. So you can see whether social media brings you more conversions then you might want to spend more money on social media. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I love how it, it's so, um, the flow of it is, is so good in terms of like, you can see the, the almost real, well, you can see the real time data of everything. And that's what I do love about um, website analytics is it's, you're not, you, there's no excuse really to take a putt in the dark anymore because you can see it. And as long as you're looking at the right things, as you were just saying with the, the right metrics, it can really help to inform what you're doing. And I think as a, especially as a recruiter or, you know, as a business owner in general, having that information is just so invaluable. Um, and, and kind of taking that back to recruiters, how, what these conversions, you know, what, what, what is, what are the key ones for, for recruiters? Yeah. So for recruit, if you're a recruitment agency, probably your main one will be an application submission. So do candidates uh, submit the application form on your website? Uh, you can also track clicks on the apply button and e you can do a comparison like what's the percentage between the number of clicks on the apply button and actually application submission. If there is a big gap between those two, then you might have a look more at your application form. Maybe it's too long and user give up in the middle of completing it or maybe it's not working as it should. So information like that can be quite, quite helpful. Uh, but as I mentioned before, also you can uh, track what actually candidates or job, seeker, job seekers are searching for on your website, uh, what kind of keywords they, they type. So you know what kind of jobs they are interested. And uh, you can also track number of job alert setups and contact form submissions for, for clients. So those kind of information will be quite useful for recruiters to know. Yeah, I mean, very useful <laughs> to say for that, that's for sure. And I mean, the other thing as well, I'm assuming most of this can be tracked through the, the, the Google Analytics platform. Is there, is there anything else that you specifically use or you would suggest? No, the Google Analytics is a free tool and is the most common used one. So I, I would recommend this one because it's free and is well known by um, pretty much everyone. So uh, I would recommend using this one. No, that's perfect. I mean, that's it's always good. You're never going to complain if it's free, are you? <laughs> if it's good. Awesome. That's amazing. And I mean, we're talking of Google and, and, and things like that. I know that they have a specific jobs function for um, recruiters. Now I can't get my head wrapped around how that all works. If you could let me know how that, how, how some of that happens, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, so Google developed a feature called Google for jobs, which is the search feature. 
uh, uh, to help job seekers find their jobs quicker um, and easier. So the the one they are looking for. Um, it's also a good way of increasing uh, free organic traffic to your recruitment website. Um, it appears on the top of the search results. So um, if you if your job is displayed there, you've got the high chances of of getting getting traffic to your website. Um, so job seeker instead of searching through multiple websites they will have all the jobs displayed in in one place so so it's much much easier for them um and when they click on the apply button they are redirected to to the specific website where they can apply for a job um and also our research showed that um only 40 percent of um website actually of recruitment website uses Google for jobs feature, um, which is quite a low number. So I, I would definitely recommend it to, to um, have your jobs posted on your website. And especially if you use a multi uh, posting tool, um, then it's with one click, you can post to, to multiple places, including your own website as well. So, and um, it's a very um, good way of uh, posting jobs quicker. Uh, and then you can um, make sure that you post frequently and make sure you apply uh, Google structured data to it and it's not blocked by um, indexing, it's not blocked uh, from indexing by uh, search engines. Okay. So this will definitely help to get you more organic traffic to your website no definitely and the fact that 40 percent and that 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 blows my mind because it's like whenever there's anything that's like native to to google or a function that they've built specifically for it you have to be crazy not to be making the most use out of that you really do and just before we because we are running out of time but just before we do finish i just have one last question um and i want something i like to ask everybody right at the end of the, of the podcast and it's um what are the two things you wish you knew at the beginning of your career um, I think first one would be, uh, when working as a team, you can achieve more and sharing information is also important. So, uh, people will know what your expectations are and they can communicate with you better as well. And then you can achieve more, you can be more successful. Um, the other thing is, I think to keep learning new things. Uh, so whether it's a new software or the tool you already using, they always develop a new feature to, to improve it, uh, or whether it's a new process of doing things. Um, I think it helps me, uh, be motivated and help me improve my, uh, skills and, uh, make the jobs easier and more interesting. Totally. No, completely agree. And especially you being a data analyst and me being in digital marketing, I know how important it is to keep learning because everything is always changing and it's really quite annoying sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Camilla. And thanks for your time. I know you're a very busy lady, um, but thank you. And I uh, hope to speak to you soon. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris.